So in the last video, we upgraded this heatsink for the Gamma, and it has been probably the best heatsink that we've found. A lot of people were commenting on the video saying that they prefer the Ice Tower, but the reason that I got this one was because it's an easy setup with the spring pins and they fit perfectly for the whole kind of bit axe uh, holes that you see here. Now, the reason that we're not using the ice tower is obviously because of the fact that you need 3D printed parts and it's a lot more hassle. These are just plug and play. So that's the reason that we bought one of these and actually tested it out. Now, after seeing the results on that video, I think it's finally time that we try and push this to two terahash. So a lot of what we've been doing is upgrading all of the bit axes that we have and trying to push them to the highest overclocks that we can possibly find. But we've never really achieved two terahash on one of these chips and today we're trying to go for it so first thing that we need to do is actually upgrade the fans so we're going to have a fan underneath and it's actually good that we have it on these mounted stilts because we can just put a fan there or there and the reason for that is just to cool down the vr temperatures so cooling down the vr so that we can actually overclock it more because that is the limiting factor we only have this plugged into one power supply, so you can see that there. So the other one is unplugged. Currently these are 100 watts and they're gonna be able to supply this with, in theory, up to 100 watts, but I don't think we're gonna get anywhere close to that. So first step is to turn this off and then put the double fan kind of mount in there and then we'll move on to overclocking. But before that, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Crypto Miner Bros. Since 2018, CryptoMinerBros.com has been the premier site for top tier crypto mining hardware, earning the trust of miners across the globe. The prices displayed on their site cover shipping and DDP straight to your doorstep, ensuring no unexpected costs at checkout. They deliver to over 100 countries and even provide lower invoicing options to help you cut down on customs fees. Payment is a breeze with options like direct bank transfer, or cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin, USDT, or Ethereum. With over 250 ASIC options, they stock some of the channel's favorites like the Bitax, the Bitax Touch, and the Avalon Nano 3S. Join tens of thousands of happy customers who rely on CryptoMinerBros.com for dependable hardware fulfillment, clear pricing, and a top-notch service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com today, link in the description. So simply what we're gonna do is just put this double fan extension onto here. So we've unplugged it now. All we have to do is unplug the fan here and put it into the PMW controlled one, which is this one right here. And then this fan is going to go into the other one. I can't really get that to focus, but that's three pin and that one's four pin if you can see that there. And I don't actually know if you get PMW control on the three pin that you see here or that you see here because this is probably just going to run at the voltage and I've heard a lot of people say that it splits it between the two fans which doesn't really matter too much the voltage regulator is the main thing that is going to be limiting the overclocking of any kind of bit axe at this point because this is so efficient that we've tested in the other videos, I think we can push it way further, but we're gonna need a little bit more voltage in terms of the power supply. So you can see that there's a screw right there. So we can up the voltage a little bit to supply it with more power. And once we've done that, we can actually start to overclock it. So I have some overclocks in mind, but we're gonna have to see how they actually fare out with the fan. So the main thing that we're gonna do is put the fan either here so you can see that's actually perfectly lined up to drag heat away from the heat sinks underneath. So these heat sinks that are on the voltage regulator, we might actually do it the other way. So put the fan here and then blow heat through the heat sinks that are on the voltage regulator to cool them down. And then hopefully that allows us to overclock a little bit more without kind of sacrificing the voltage regulator. So let's get all that plugged in and then we'll turn it on and see what we get. So as you can see, got that all plugged in. So the first fan is plugged into that, which extends into this that you're seeing right here. 
and then the second one extends into that and then we're just going to place the fan there if i currently let go it does kind of flick out a little bit so we might need to find a solution just to hold it in place for a little bit whilst we overclock and we can't actually put it here because the power is might get in the way a little bit so we might have to do it the other side or i also thought about pushing air this way but that might also push hot air from the chip upwards to the voltage regulator kind of heat sinks that you see underneath there but yeah we're gonna plug it in and we're just gonna test out see if the fans work first so let's get that here and let's plug it in sorry for the shaky movement here but this is what we're going for so you can see both fans are spinning you have that one there and then you have the Nocta on top Obviously the RPMs are different for each of these. This one goes up to, I believe it's 10,000 RPM and then the Nocta goes up to 4,500. So there might be a difference in that. But that's basically the whole setup that we're gonna go for. Cool the V, cool the V regulator and then cool the chip with the Nocta as well. So let's head over to the computer and start overclocking. Hopefully we can get it up to two terahash today because that is probably the highest that we've ever achieved and we want it stable at two terahash. So I've had some suggestions as well for overclocks to actually get it to there and we'll try to test them out now. So let's head over to the computer now. So here we are on the AxOS dashboard and I think today we are going to be up in the frequency higher than we've ever done it before. One thing that I also want to note as well is the fan control. We might need to actually up that to just 100% at some point just to see if we can actually hit that two terahash because I don't think the other fan, so the external one that's not on top, that's cooling the voltage regulator, I don't think that that is going to spin up to whatever RPM. So the Nocta fan should be PMW controlled but I don't think the other one is. You can let me know in the comments if that splitter does actually allow you to control both. Currently we're sitting at 1.48 terahash, so we're not that far off two terahash. The efficiency is actually great, so 14.06 is the expected, which is actually lower than the normal bitmain chips run at in terms of the efficiency. Efficiency right now is 12.13 or 12.07, which is great efficiency. And you can see we're at about 20 watts or 21 watts. ASIC temperature is 48 and voltage regulator is 51. This fan speed is clearly a little bit lower, but I don't know what fan speed it's actually going off because there's two fans plugged in. So today we are just going to start off and this is going to be the first time I've ever gone to a thousand in terms of the frequency. So we just inspect element that. And then the core voltage, we probably want it at something around 1350. That's what I'm gonna go based off of. And then we are gonna take automatic fan control off and we're just going to run it at, let's just say 90%, just to test out how well it actually functions. And then we're gonna restart. So you might hear the fans spin up very quickly in the background. And hopefully that is going to give us, so we have an expected of 2.04 and hopefully we actually get that expected. But we're going to be monitoring it as we go along. Power is 20.3. I expect that to go up to at least 25. Okay, that's way higher. So 30 watts. And because we only have it plugged into one power supply and that's only supplying one, we can actually do that. So it's at 36 watts. Temperature is still good and the voltage regulator is still good. I think we can let that run in terms of the temperature up to around 60 degrees. And then the voltage regulator is rated up to maybe 85, something like that. So we might have to cut it off if that gets higher, which it looks like it is getting higher as well. But input voltage is still good at five volts. Fan speed, we still might need to up that completely to 100%. 
because this is going very quickly. We're sitting at 1.8 terahash. A lot of people have been getting this with way better overclocks though. A lot of people have been achieving two terahash with not even the back fan sitting on the voltage regulator. So maybe there's something wrong with the voltage regulator in this particular board, or maybe it's some sort of silicon lottery that people are achieving two terahash without having to overclock it as much. Power is climbing actually very a lot. So 37 watts. Clearly it's not efficient to try and go for two terahash. You want to be sitting at, I think this is an efficiency of maybe the Bitax Supra. So that was from an S19 efficiency. But with solo mining, it doesn't really matter about efficiency that much overall. This is not going to be a permanent thing either. We are going to be taking the overclocks down. This is only for an experiment for the video. But it looks like it's actually pretty stable here. So 37.6 watts. Temperature is still rising a little bit, but it's still stabling out. If you can see the line there, it's pretty stable at 58. The voltage regulator is pretty stable as well, but it seems to be heating up a little bit. The fan speed, obviously not changing. But overall, I think we're doing pretty well in terms of the hash rate. We haven't had any rejected, so that's great. Efficiency is actually higher or lower technically than the expected. So that's good as well. But I also don't know if it's recording the watts for the two fans and not the one fan. So the reason previously that we couldn't really overclock it was the limiting factor of the heatsink. And that was really getting in the way because we couldn't cool the chip down quick enough. But the voltage regulator then, if we were, you know, overclocking it to the maximum, my voltage regulator on this specific unit was getting up to, you know, 85, which 100 is technically the cutoff, but you don't want to go to 100 degrees with that because you'll risk burning out some of the components. But I think 47 is a great kind of temperature to have the voltage regulator at. And then the ASIC temperature, as I said, it can get up to around 60. It can go to 65, but I wouldn't push it further than that particularly because you want kind of longevity within the actual miner. But currently it looks like the heatsink is doing a lot of work and it's actually helping out quite a lot. So the back fan obviously is helping as well with the voltage regulator. I think we could even reduce the fan speed that we have there. So 90, it could be maybe 85 and that would run just slightly hotter with a bit more efficiency. But as you can see, we've actually stabled out to maybe 2.4. If we look on the average here, if we can get it to show up, it's really hard to actually pinpoint the average line when you're on here. So 1.92 is the average. So we kind of want that to go a little bit more. But it looks like it's running very well currently. We're going to leave it for maybe five minutes and then come back with some updated statistics. I don't think it's going to change too much, but we'll see if the average comes up to the expected, which is going to be two terahash. And we've never actually hit two terahash before, but it could potentially mean even if this stables out that we could push it even further. I haven't seen any videos of anybody getting higher than 2.5 terahash on one of these. I don't think three terahash is even possible on just one of these chips. But if you guys can let me know in the comments, if you've seen anybody at three terahash, with one of these, then let me know the setup and we can try replicate it for one of these videos. But let's just let that run for a little bit and then we'll come back to see if it averages out onto the expected hash rate. So after letting it run for a little bit, as you can see there, our average is 2.02 .02 terahash. So we finally achieved that two terahash number and I'm only counting it as an average. So we have hit previously, I think before in a couple of videos, we have hit up to two terahash but never had it as the average of two terahash or above. The efficiency right now is saying 16.65, but if we go based on the expected, which is 18.48, and we compare it to some other miners, it is nearly bang on with the Canon Avalon A1566. It kind of drops down into that S21 range, so the regular S21 but is also comparable to the micro BT 
M60 and M66S that you have here. Anything above that, we're kind of dipping into S19 territory, so 19 joules per terahash. But even with the first kind of iteration of testing the Copperzilla heatsink, I know that this S21 XP can get down to 13.5, which is actually very, very low. But even before that, we had kind of an average efficiency of around 12, which was nearly up there with the X, with the S21 XP Hydro and that one. And the most efficient one on the market right now is currently 11 joules per terahash. I don't think we're ever going to get down to that in terms of efficiency, especially not trying to overclock it to this hash rate. We could try and make it as efficient as possible, like try find the most efficient overclocks. I don't think it can be pushed further than maybe 13.5 in terms of efficiency. So the next video might be testing like the maximum efficiency using that script, that Python script for overclocking. I know it gives you the best hash rates, but it could also give you the best efficiency as well. So it can produce what the best efficiency results are in terms of the overclocking that you're going to do. Quick little update on the temperature. It is slowly rising. Voltage regulator is slowly rising as well, but I don't think it's going to get much further past that. The watts are obviously very high, so there's a lot going through that board currently. But as I said, the next video might be us testing the efficiency of this and trying to get it down to 13 or even 12 at steady efficiency. Or I don't think that 11 is possible. I think that they are the same chips in there, but the hydro cooling is just way more efficient than, you know, air cooling. As you can kind of see, the top four that you see there are all hydro cooled. And then this one is an immersion cooled. So the lowest efficiency that you'd kind of get to or hope to get to steadily is 13.5 joules per terahash on one of these miners, unless you are immersion cooling or hydro cooling the bit axe which is a whole nother thing that we've tried to do but never really pulled it off so yeah stick around because this heat sink has kind of been one of the best ones i want to note as well that they are kind of sold out the company has gone out of business for that actual copperzilla heat sink so any ones that are out there on the market now are going to be the last of them so if you have one of them i would keep a hold of it and if you're thinking about upgrading bit axes in the future or getting more of them I would pre-order a bunch of the stock for these because as soon as they're out, they're out. They're not going to make another version of these ever or unless a company does come out with it, but I don't see that happening in the future. So these heat sinks are kind of a rare commodity to have at this point. So if you are thinking of getting one, now is probably the best time because the stock, once it's out, that's out forever basically and nobody will be able to get their hands on them I've seen a lot of people saying link it in the description to where to get one, but I don't actually have a link for Amazon. You can't find them on there. The only places that I could find them were some Walmart website that I seen. So that's going to be in the US and then solomining.de is I think the only person in Europe that actually sells them. So that's where I got my one from. But yeah, let me know if you want to see a video on the maximum efficiency that we can hit because that's kind of comparing it to actual Bitcoin mining, like pool mining and profitability mining. So we'll do that video and then you guys can let me know in the comments if you wanna see any other videos as well. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.